So these nuts. I decreased it for the these live. nuts. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, I wish um, I uh, de- I wish you had more uh, modern uh, meme expressions to use, but you don't know any of them because you don't use TikTok. I'm and a JT boomer. also doesn't <laughs> use TikTok. And I'm sure every single listener is either that guy who thinks he's too good for TikTok <laughs> or has a bunch of friends who think they're too good for TikTok. And there is an objectively uh good guy <laughs> side in this uh, sort of uh, contrast and the bad guy side and i think we all know which one it <laughs> and is and on the other side it's, the one, it's definitely the good side is definitely not one that uses these nuts in 2022 okay <laughs> i used that yesterday <laughs> oh. <laughs> i love it i was just going to say on the other side they're employed people so that's <laughs> <laughs> I, I will I, say I've I seen joke. I've seen more bad TikToks than I have good TikToks. Yeah. So to me, it's a net negative ah, to the world. And 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 you've seen what more good YouTube videos than you've seen a bad YouTube videos? You've seen <laughs> oh, I am under no I'm under no impressions that YouTube is a good thing. YouTube sucks. <laughs> We're all yeah, terrible. Yeah, really. It's a necessary evil at this point. Yeah. No. Even you cannot uh, attach that logic to humans. Have you met more uh, good people than <laughs> fucking horrendous animals? That So, you know, we shouldn't uh, destroy TikTok over uh, bad TikToks, and we shouldn't destroy humanity over bad humans. I'm, I'm kidding. We should destroy TikTok and humans. Uh, I have a few stories for you. Boys, <laughs> I'll start off with the thing that's pissing me off. Uh, if 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 I'm in a foul mood, then uh, I apologize. I apologize in advance. But basically, what happened is, um, I had a pair of headphones. This is just a cheapy fucking piece of shit headphones. They crapped out on me, so I went and I bought like uh, new uh, headphones. They're also cheapy, shitty uh, uh, headphones. Um, for just everyday use, just plug into my phone, watching YouTube videos, fucking listening to music, uh, or even for this recording right now, I'm I'm where I'm Watch using some shitty uh, headphones uh, attached to the mic. Um, exactly. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, I took it with me to work today and in between patients, sometimes I'm like, fuck it, I have a bit of downtime. So I watch a YouTube video or something or whatever. Right. Um, and, uh, I put it in the, the pocket, uh, of, of, uh, like, uh, my, uh, something like scrubs basically. Um, and, uh, then I forgot about it. And then at the end of the work day, I took off my scrubs and then I threw them down the fucking chute where it goes into the, oh. <laughs> where it goes into the, yeah, the laundry oh, basically. And my, <laughs> my fucking headphones are still there. <laughs> so I'm going to go tomorrow. I'm going to hope that they're, they're like, they're garbage headphones, honestly, but it, like, I don't want to, I don't want the hassle to go and get new new ones, so yeah, I'll go and dig through fucking dirty clothes tomorrow and see if I can uh, <laughs> you, find them. You want the hassle uh, of digging through the biohazardous yeah. scrubs? <laughs> Isn't that fucking insane? We, we managed to. Now I'm gonna take it to like fucking 500 meters away from the actual <laughs> conversation, but still, it's relevant. We've managed to optimize production and minimize labor cost to such a level that it's a bigger pain to walk to the shop to buy something than to actually pay the money for it right it's it's fucking wild that is true yeah, yeah. no that's true all of all of ordering food is basically built around that concept you calculate how much money your time is worth versus how uh, long it's going to take you to cook versus how long it's going to take for delivery and how many things you can do in the, in the, in the time <laughs> in which you are not cooking. We literally started to think like time is actually money, which I guess at the end of the day it is. And it's more valuable than actually buying a thing. Yeah, no, that, that was related actually because um, uh, you mentioned the food delivery thing. It's like unless the, a fucking place doesn't deliver around your parts. There's a, a place that's literally, I don't know why, it's, it's, it's maybe... Um, like ten minutes away, five minutes, like five between five and ten minutes away from from my place. Uh, it's a Turkish like grill place, um, and they don't fucking deliver to where I live. Uh, mm. So yesterday I went out with a bunch of fucking friends Turks. after work, <laughs> 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 right? Um, uh, <laughs> so uh, yesterday uh, I went out after work with some friends, and we went. We tried this place, and it fucking slaps. It was very very good food. Um, so uh, I, I packed uh, some leftovers, and I just had them right now. I hastily ate them right before the, the recording of this. Mm. Um, I, th- I think I swallowed the fucking olive with a pit hole. Jesus Christ, it was so good. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Um, and now the, the the other thing, I was telling JT while you got me was away. Like every once in a while, every couple of weeks, I get a new contender for the largest like ball sack <laughs> I see in the fucking clinic. I'm sorry for the crew, you know, but most of the time I get like old ladies with hypertension. That, that's that's not no fucking yeah, old lady right? ball sacks. But anyways, yeah. So yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, exactly. Uh, but yeah, and like, you know, sometimes I look at these dudes and I'm like, are you like using bike pumps or something to fight? What the fuck? How do you get your balls so far? <laughs> like, I, like, honestly, look, like I could take my two hands and like try to cup their balls and they would still be spilling out the fucking corners wow. of my hand. Like this guy had a huge... No nose. way. But yeah. Like, are we talking lemon size or like orange size? Like, no, no, slightly smaller than lemon. I said li- like decently sized limes. Lime? Yeah. Jesus. Nice. Yeah. Nice. I, and brother, by the, it's, it's like nothing. Boy. Yeah, it, there's nothing wrong with it, the, the guy for the most part. Like he has some pain. That's why I had to, uh, you know. But so yeah. Super uh, endowed. Yeah. That's super fucking yeah. cool, bro. Absolutely massive balls, like yeah. And and of course, every couple of weeks there's a new contender. I should be keeping score at this point. Uh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but so okay, okay. So w- is there a bigger diversity among? Male penis size or male ball size? I think ball size is the biggest thing I've noticed, but your ma- mileage may vary. <laughs> yeah. No, there's some we people I've ask seen you in twenty years. Yeah. yeah. No, some people you see and they have like, uh, like I don't know, like yeah, all of size. Yeah, yeah, like all of size. Then some people go up to date size, and then you have these people who are fucking, you know. Uh, yeah, limes, and and they're. I'm like, how do you like? Can you even comfortably wear underwear? I don't know. This is a very. Uh, this is such a stupid thing to be starting this podcast with. I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's, it's fine. Actually, I have like, uh, it's a it's a medical question. Oh, so boy. everybody that's <laughs> that's had sex with someone else from uh, the back knows that uh, some butts, like butt cracks, are perfectly clean, like absolutely mm-hmm. clean. And not okay. meaning like cleaned with uh, toilet paper after taking a dump. No, I mean they just uh, like the color palette of the butt <laughs> crack does not change as we're getting closer to the butt mm-hmm. crack, right? Mm-hmm. But certain people, the closer it goes towards the butt crack, it's a bit brownish and it's not dirty. Like they had a shower or whatever. It's just a bit brownish. So my question is, is this <laughs> just natural skin pigmentation? Yeah, number yeah, one, yeah. is this, uh, they just, you know, leave their ass unwiped for too long and the skin starts uh, to take up uh, the color of shit? Or <laughs> oh uh, is it something that I haven't <laughs> okay. thought of? No, it's just melanation. It's just it's a completely natural genetic thing. Um, some people have different distributions uh, than others. Um, some people have different ratios uh, of melanin, etc., uh, etc. Cetera, et cetera. Uh, so yeah, it's completely normal to have you know differently colored skin, and particularly around your your butthole. That's completely normal. Um, it has nothing to do with you know the purpose <laughs> that that hole is intended okay. for. Um, Thank it is, God. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, also like throughout life, particularly for women, uh, melanation across your body can change uh, after pregnancy and whatnot. Um, uh, in men, in a few rare cases. Yeah, yeah, that's what women invented for when uh, you go to the hospital and she gave birth to a child, which is a completely different color than you. <laughs> oh my God. No, <laughs> no, that's no, not no, what I meant. In three different parts of my life, there's it's different melanation. It's yours. It's, it's yours, Hakim. It's yours. <laughs> oh, Lord. So after that little rant about sizes of butts and different uh, ass coloring, uh, if you're a new listener to the program, we uh, promise you that's not uh, what we do and what we talk about every episode. And if you're a (laughs) usual (laughs) listener, you know that that's exactly what we talk (laughs) about every episode. Uh, But it's not all uh, bull and ball shit, if I should say, uh, over here. We do try to talk about something relatively serious. And recently, actually, in one of our uh, live Q&As with uh, some of our Patreon tiers that we did last month, we were given a great suggestion of talking about uh, Orientalism and cultural imperialism, which, yes, they are two different things, but still relatively in the same sort of... uh, uh, broad uh, kind of in the same strokes. Can I say that? I guess I can. So uh, they're very misunderstood concepts. But different eggs in one basket. <laughs> different eggs in one basket. They're very misunderstood concepts, but extremely important when it comes to, in my opinion, the boys will say uh, why for them. But for me, they're very important because they can explain why we hold certain uh predefined opinions about certain parts of the world from which we've never actually 
uh, met someone and places we've never actually gone to. And uh, sometimes these notions are not only overtly negative, but overtly positive about how it usually goes some places in the West and overtly negative about certain cultures uh, in the East. But not to over explain, we'll get uh, more in detail uh, discussing these, these entire concepts. So uh, what I wanted to start with, what we wanted to start with, is kind of uh, the broad definitions of uh, both uh, Orientalism and cultural imperialism. Uh, and then after that, dive in with our own personal experiences with it, with uh, explaining how it comes to be, with explaining how uh, socialists seek to combat it, etc., etc. So with, uh, if I'll take the liberty to just very broadly touch on what, in my opinion, Orientalism is. If you Google it, it's going to tell you that is the standard uh, the, that the standard definition of Orientalism is the representation of Asia in a stereotyped way that is regarded as embodying a colonialist attitude. And while yes, Orientalism of early European colonialism was very much so centered towards depicting the Asian as inherently different to the civilized Westerner in order to excuse both uh, morally and economically policies which would obviously hurt those parts of the world but benefit uh, the local bourgeois. But as Orientalism kind of was born during that period, it turned into uh, a kind of active process through which all sorts of people in from wherever they are on the planet tend to define themselves somewhere in the civilizational hierarchy that they know that exists. So to say it very simply, I can talk about my part of the world, a Croat or a Serb or a Bosnian is going to, again, because of Orientalism, put himself on a lower level than a civilized German or Englishman or Frenchman with the Spanish nah, you know, uh, yeah, you know, they have their dances and shit and uh, they might be lazy, so uh, they're, they're not. But uh, the German and the Englishman is very well educated and very well mannered and they got their suits. So we tell ourselves, you know, we're shitty, we're not as, as good as them. But, and this is where the other side, the uh, even worse side of Orientalism kicks in, we might not be as good as the English and as civilized as them, but at least we're not like the Roma. At least mm -hmm. we're not like the Albanians or the Turks mm -hmm. or whatever. And mm -hmm. then the same Orientalism, which exists in Turkey, does a similar thing. It just so happens to be that our globe, the way it is set up, when you're using Orientalism, it's always some group a bit to the east to you. But it doesn't always uh, have to be the case. American, for example, Orientalism applies very much to Mexicans and, and the South Americans in general, and they're not necessarily to the East. But I just want to like give this uh, broader definition and to make sure that people understand that, yes, Orientalism leads to bigotry and racism towards other groups which you consider inferior to yours, but it also leads to internalized bigotry in which you think your culture is not up to par with those from which, at the end of the day, very often Orientalism stems from. Exactly right. Uh, beautifully put, as the bingo card says. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but, uh, um, shout out to the subreddit. Anyways, uh, so uh, the uh, something very interesting also is, although I, I appreciate you Gopniks mentioning that Orientalism can be internalized, number one, number two, that certain quote unquote Orientals can them uh, or Oriental groups can themselves have a sort of Orientalist outlook on other groups of people. Um, Taking that aside, <clears throat> historically as well as in the present day, Orientalism has been almost exclusively, exclusively a European phenomenon towards non-white groups. That's almost the the uh, the, the uh, built-in setup, let's say. Um, yeah. Oh, Hong the, Kong. Uh, yeah, but yes. 
Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, the 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 way I think about it is is um, or a nice way of putting it is um, in the superstructure and base sort of uh, model. The spiritual super superstructural successor to colonialism is. Uh, and of course, like a period of time, so modern neo-colonialism is Orientalism, um, and neo-colonialism itself is the economic base as it currently exists. Um, a nice definition that kind of helps more concretely uh, form uh, an image of Orientalism in your mind uh, can be derived from the, the Great Soviet Encyclopedia, which defined it as reflecting the colonialist racist worldview, worldview of the European and American bourgeoisie. From the very beginning, bourgeois Orientology diametrically opposed the civilizations of the so-called West with those of the East, slanderously declaring that Asian people are racially inferior, somehow primordially backward, incapable of determining their own fates, and that they appeared only as history's objects rather than its subject. Which is again very very interesting. That's something that's studied. It's not something that's active or uh, a living breathing. By that something I mean the, these people, these quote unquote Orientals. Um, something to 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 also like hammer it home. Um, Orientalism was never a serious attempt to analyze. Uh, cultures of the East or peoples of the East. What Orientalism is, it's a fundamental imagining or misimagining, mm -hmm. basically, of Absolutely. another culture through a Western and European mind, a Western European outlook. It's completely divorced from the realities of the societies that are actually being depicted. Um, and another way to word it, again, just so it's fully clear, it is the Occidental refusal to undertake an actual study of whatever the Orient is. The very idea of Orient 2, by the way, is completely ridiculous. You can't take in, for example, the cultures and peoples and languages and religions of Mali, uh, Algeria, Iraq, Afghanistan, and like East Asia, and put them into one blanket, you know, oriental image or box, all right? Um, so, of course, you strip these people of their agency, of their independence, uh, of their of everything that makes them unique. Instead, you just kind of paint with this uh, brownish, yellowish, blackish um, uh, paintbrush uh, over basically the vast majority of humanity um, to the... the, the, the uh, uh, enjoyment, um, or depending, by the way, uh, of, of the white man or the of the European. Uh, this can be either be for intentions of subjugation because they want for colonial aims. This could be for, for example, fear um, out of some sort of like, you know, oh, the Muslims are going to come and, you know, fucking teach little Billy that, uh, I don't I don't know, what, what would they teach little Billy at this point? They would teach little Billy to season his food. Uh, that's what the Muslims are going to do. <laughs> And or uh, being laughed at, for example, and a good example of that is, is Aladdin. We'll get into that. Um, it always depends on the the colonial context. It's the, the the Orientalist worldview is those people over there are a sexy threat, right? Um, either we want to fuck them or they want to fuck us, mm. uh, but they're also dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, that's how I describe you, Gopnik. Uh, <laughs> he's the <laughs> sexy threat. <laughs> uh, oh, oh. I don't know if you guys have noticed it, but uh, it's uh, surprisingly entertaining to watch uh, uh, the wealthiest of the wealthy in a way uh, in order to compete with capitalists of other places in the world use this implied Orientalism that, I mean, we talked about this before, that over here in the West, we are entrepreneurs, we're philanthropists, we are established businessmen that help our communities and make sure that the democracy is still alive, while people with similar levels of power and, you know, monetary fucking... Uh, hundred thousand zeros in their bank accounts over in the east are supporters of the cpc <laughs> our russian oligarchs are this and that even in the highest stratas of society uh, there is uh, sort of an imply an implication that uh, everything ours is even when it's bad, it's not as bad as what it can be over with the with Eastern weird looking people, you know? Mm, yeah. And that's one of the, the inherent aspects of that Orientalist worldview is the complete and absolute ascendance of the West and everything Western, right? Uh, that's why exactly you got this point of the uh, um, uh, the Western billionaire versus the Russian oligarch, you know, despite the fact that they're practically the same way, uh, they're, they're the same thing. Um, it's fundamentally rooted in that uh, sense of Western superiority. Um, only the West is rational and scientific and di uh, democratic and developed and progressive, etc., etc., while the East is, again, primordially uh, 
uh, backwards and underdeveloped and um, it, it, by its very institution, by its very inception and every other uh, sphere of existence is locked in some, you know, uh, dark past, despite the fact that mm. it was Europe that suffered the, the dark ages, even the, with the term dark ages is, is kind of uh, not the most accurate thing even to describe that period of European history but the the point stands um, that uh, the same culture that gave rise to Orientalist wo world views was itself had ascendance cultural ascendance happen in a different way uh, would have been viewed through Orientalist lens uh, if that makes sense absolutely and some groups are seem to be accepted into the fold but not to the full extent they will mm -hmm. still uh, like opinion bigoted opinions are going to be held against them but for in order to achieve relative cultural and and economic integration between certain states uh the the west will kind of nod along with uh, a far eastern uh quote unquote far eastern country now becoming a part of the western world i mean if we look at the map japan is the most eastern country on the planet earth yet when you always read about the quote unquote western world japan is always included mm -hmm. in it if the you international were to, community yeah absolutely <laughs> if, <laughs> if you were to if you were to write a paper uh, and if you were to use a kazakhstani academic source or a uh, Vietnamese academic source, or a Tajik academic source, that paper would not be graded and they would ask you to find a more legitimate academic source. Mm -hmm. But New if York you Times. cite a South <laughs> Korean, South Korean or, or Japanese source, which uh, or are again, or Australian, <laughs> yeah, that's the most, but that, if you cite an Australian one, you should be kicked out of university because <laughs> Australia does not exist. I think we have established this. Stop <laughs> giving Australian propaganda to uh, to the ears of our listeners. It is disgusting. All right, sorry, mate. Uh, but, but, uh, <laughs> and he's now, he, and he's doing the invented accent. And apparently there's kangaroos there. There's a thing that likes to box and it looks like a <laughs> rabbit, but it jumps like a fuck Rabbits off. Rabbits also yeah, jump. Right. <laughs> 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 fucking Alice in Wonderland shit is this that is also me okay. oh, but, uh, oh. no. you can tell me where's the top hat next <laughs> I don't even know what I was talking about but yes yes uh, all I'm saying is that that they are willing to close their eyes on certain allies uh, and increase uh, kind of public understanding and knowledge that uh, these people are not like the rest in the Orient. You know, they're more like us. Basically, the uh, I have uh, I can't be racist. I have one black friend, but uh, mm -hmm. but uh, but done on uh, a general field of geopolitics. So so again, it's used to both include and exclude. And when you have an exception to the rule, like Japan or South Korea, then it's indirectly proof that the rule itself exists. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why, but when he said when he said, "Oh, uh, uh, I'm not racist. I have a black friend." Remind me of, of some. There was a um, uh, a Twitter screenshot that I saw, and it's basically a, a picture of a uh, black lady. Um, and she's a, an attractive black lady and then underneath the you know she has like hundreds of thousands of likes on this Twitter post and underneath there's one guy who's like uh, I'm racist but god damn <laughs> <laughs> yeah because <laughs> so, I remember there's a, you know I remember there's a long long time ago some like Republican senator or something um, and then like some journalist accused him of being racist he's like but I, but I was like I find African American women very attractive I'm like what the fuck <laughs> come on <laughs> Oh my god. Oh sorry, sorry. Sorry to the country. Um Mm, yes, yes, yes. There's a brand new one that came out on May third, uh, and some some guy saw a story of uh, of, of some lady and replied, uh, "Never been into brownies, but you might make oh. me change my <laughs> mind." <laughs> lol. And she replies with brownies question mark, and he replies with brownies. You know, ethnic. Oh You're mixed god. with something, aren't you? Just my little <laughs> nickname. And then my dude, what the fuck? And now this dude uh, has been screenshotted and put on Twitter, and there's 160 like thousand likes. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, good friend, Jesus Christ, but Brown. I like how he's like, oh, you must be, you must be mixed with something. Again, it's that weird like Aryan strain, that yeah. bullshit of like, oh, you know, 
Persian women are attractive. That you know the fucking Gabin, uh, Gabino shit. Was like, oh, Persian women are attractive because <laughs> there's a common connection with the whites of Europe. I was like, what the <laughs> yeah. fuck? Yeah. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> but yeah, anyways, um, <laughs> uh, you know this actually kind of kind of loosely connects. There's a point I want to make as well as that. Um, the idea of of course that when, when we talk about Orientalism, there is something that's doing the observing. It's the, the West or the Occident, and the, the West as an idea likes to presents its, uh, itself as some kind of monolith that can stand against you know um whatever this other is um but the very idea of being western occidental makes absolutely no sense um because there's no it's not based on skin color or ethnicity or government or geography even f fucking geography there's a, a, you know like europe for some reason apparently extends into armenia and georgia but uh azerbaijan is where like the line is cut right turkey like christian turkey or byzantine turkey was considered uh, excuse me byzantine turkey was considered to be uh, you know ooh, a good christian land and somehow included as part of the west at the time and then the second the the you know it becomes muslim all of a sudden it's not anymore uh, likewise with the the moors of uh, spain many of which were ethnic spaniards um, but then all of a sudden it's like oh but they're muslim so yeah it, and one important point i'm just going to try to hammer home that the very uh, formation of the concept of being the West has uh, a fundamental pillar of it was standing against um, Islam and that continues into this day. And for a brief interim period during the 20th century, it was also standing against communism, right? You're not Western unless you're, you know, you're a free marketeer. You, you know, uh, uh, don't want to give women rights. And, uh, you know, the fascists that have been in power for 20 years that, you know, a revolution, not a revolution happened, but, you know, they lost the war. Uh, uh, those people are conveniently still mayors. And uh, we're going to make <laughs> them, one of them like the deputy head of like NATO. <laughs> yeah. And the other guy is just going to, he's going to be like, okay, this, this other guy, he's going to run our, our, our rocket program. <laughs> yeah, we know he, <laughs> you know, so, and then this other dude who used to experiment on twins, uh, uh. you will give us your research data, and then we're just going to give you like a, a quiet life in the Midwest. People just won't know about you. You know, oh my God. We imported uh, so, yeah. so many of them. It's insane. Mm. Like Operation, Look up Operation Paper. Yeah, I was going to say the same yeah. thing. Oh, it's it's <laughs> whack. Uh, by the way, in before these people were like, oh, fuck it, but the Soviets uh, import, uh, took Nazi scientists. To yeah, but the Soviets took in Nazi scientists and put them to fucking work, all right? <laughs> yeah. Unlike the, the the Americans who were like, they were clinking glasses with them. I was like, yeah, yeah, two weeks ago, <laughs> we were clinking cl glasses too. So, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Oh, my God. Uh, maybe we can just like very briefly talk about the political relevance of, of Orientalism. Sure. Um, there are many ways we can... Uh, this is the thing. Um, one of the fundamental works that actually uh, opened up this entire uh, field of study was uh, Edward Said's Orientalism, which I highly recommend everybody reads. There are two books that you have to read. Absolutely. Like, you have no excuse. It's Edward Said's Orientalism and Franz Fanon's The Wretched of the Earth. These two are absolute must-reads. They're incredibly entertaining. It's going to broaden your mind. Anyways, um, it opened up a huge field of study that uh, you can spend your like you know years studying this stuff at this point so many uh, different uh, works have been written um, but the fundamental point is your analysis can differ it can be from music or movies or um, foreign policy etc etc I'm going to talk about just political relevan relevancy of this uh, very briefly um, my own country Iraq has been at the uh, the, the head the, the butt end what, what do you guys do that was mm -hmm. oh, fuck what do you Americans say is it the what? butt end is that right like of, is it the, the, the rifle like, the, like butt end of so there's the no. butt of the joke you get the the raw end of the deal you get the short straw okay. you get the, <laughs> okay. the short stick <laughs> whatever okay <laughs> what I, got options. Okay, I got options fine. get for raw okay. handled yeah whatever yes exactly right. all the above <laughs> okay coffee <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, my country has been absolutely fucked up by this by the, the entire uh, concept of Orientalism because the two illegal uh, invasions of wars of aggression against my country were fundamentally fueled by an Orientalist world outlook. Um, Iraqis had been systematically, by the way, this goes for Arabs and Muslims in general, but during those uh, short periods, specifically Iraq, were systematically dehumanized. Uh, our agency was taken away from us. Our independence was taken away from us. Um, everything was a weird black and white thing. They do this always with with the. Uh, foreign policy enemies of the United States, right? The people are all, either they hate us and they, ooh, they support Al-Qaeda um, and all that kind of shit. They absolutely hate us. They hate our freedoms. I don't know how uh, American freedoms got all the way into into uh, Iraq, but... Um, <laughs> uh, uh, but... Um, no, because they're, they're, going, they're going to fight for, for, for you know, freedom. That's the bullshit they say. Um, but yeah, um, point being... Uh, either we're absolute enemies that can't, you know, ooh, every single one of us, even the fucking four-year-old, um, which they kind of recreated that in the, what's that fucking shitty movie, American Sniper? Yeah. Of the war criminal that ended up dying because yep. he, he was shot at a gas station or something. That's Fuck him. Um, 
yeah uh and i think there's a scene i've I never watched the movie because my brain will explode like from anger so um but i think i remember there's a scene from a movie where there's like a five-year-old or something and he's like oh i shouldn't shoot him but then it turns out like oh he's helping the the insurgents the terrorists who are <laughs> you know fighting in their own community like <laughs> the street that they get the, this guy was born right he's armed himself and he wants to defend he's like oh he's an insurgent terrorist <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> fucking <laughs> my god but yeah um again and like uh, he kills a kid i don't fucking know the I wouldn't put it beneath them. Yeah. Um, anyways, uh, my, my point being, it's either that or uh, we're completely brainwashed. They do this with the, the North Koreans and the Chinese and the Cubans and stuff like that. Completely brainwashed. They don't know anything about the outside world. They have no knowledge of economics or politics or, or just general world news. They don't know what their government actually does. Um, every single thought of theirs is controlled, which hilariously is what kind of goes on in, in most of the West, particularly in the United States. Um Ask a, an American to point, you know, North Korea on a map, let alone like tell you what their system of governance is or what the average pe people think. Yeah, it's yeah. L let alone for you know a place like Turkmenistan or something like Tur Turkmenistan. I thought that was a what's, what's that movie called? Was it uh, the, the Bor Borat? <laughs> <laughs> is that what Borat was? <laughs> no, I know it's Kazakhstan, but yeah. Um, Americans never seem to disappoint in the in the in these things. Oh, yeah, uh, th 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 that's just my point. Um, <laughs> very scattered, but the TLDR is um, you you get uh, a outlook that is incredibly simplistic in order to drum up uh, popular support for a war that otherwise would not be wanted. This was done in Afghanistan. This was done in Iraq, and they're done the the way this is done is very sneakily. It's either done in the two ways I mentioned previously, um, or it's reinforced through media quite a bit. If you uh, there's a good book and a documentary I've recommended several times. It's called Real Bad Arabs, R E E L, uh, like a film reel, uh, which shows depictions of Arabs and how they are Orientalist, and it shows that in, every time. Uh, when there's a lead up to a war in the Middle East uh, or West Asia is more appropriately, um, you have this increased, uh, uh, well, like Orientalist media, um, particularly of them as being enemies. Again, I mentioned that that point before of uh, in the, one of the Transformers movies for some reason the fucking Autobots are going and fighting terrorists in the <laughs> yeah. desert for some fucking reason you know aliens would come and descend on the earth and then decide to support the United States of course that's what they would do yep. right um, <laughs> but yeah, they wouldn't be like that's an empire of hate I think we should do something against that <laughs> um, but yeah uh, of course this also seeps into education and cultural understandings and something that will be a bit uh, uh, not controversial but yeah, yeah I have to tiptoe around it but it's true there's something called pink and rainbow imperialism that uh, definitely plays into uh, orientalist perspectives um, and it's the this uh, the pink imperialism is oh the women of Afghanistan they're suffering so badly we need to go there and bomb the ever sh living shit out of them <laughs> so that we can save the women Even despite the fact that American intervention has systematically worsened the condition of women um, in, in in uh, the region everywhere uh, everywhere they're, they're intervened by the way even in Latin America um, number one and number two um, the the rainbow imperialism this is something that's a beginning now is oh the, the, there's a, a discrimination against LGBT people so we have to you know uh, do XYZ um, and then as a result usually this this uh, paradoxically creates even worse anti-LGBT attitudes or even laws uh, up to a point and there's a good book by Yusuf Masood it's called uh, Desiring Arabs which is a very good uh, section uh, on basically this entire concept of, of, of uh, rainbow imperialism and um, uh, for example the Egyptian laws anti-LGBT laws in Egypt and how um, at the uh, as a result of um, quote unquote NGOs, American and other Western uh, pro LGBT or LGBT right uh, NGOs, they've uh, created a new environment where of discrimination where previously there was not, uh, to, at least to an extent. Also, it kind of plays into uh, the part that um, the LGBT rights they care about are usually only for upper middle class and upper class. Uh, LGBT people of the imperial core, usually white people, and usually has connotations to, to towards um, uh, the the, the uh, sex trade. Um, with, for example, uh, one of the biggest uh, drives was uh, sex tourism in Egypt. Um, older gay men, for example, uh, very wealthy gay men going to uh, Egypt to sleep with young uh, uh, Egyptian men, etc., etc. Very interesting book. Check out uh, um, Desiring Arabs. Um, yeah. There's so much more to say, but somebody take it away from me. <laughs> yeah, just a, a little side note. It's going to be really funny, you know, darkly funny, going forward, watching the United States try to spin involvement in other countries mm. as, you know, protecting the rights of women or of gay people. And, like, right here at home, right now, we are rewinding the clock on rights of all sorts like that. Like the abortion mm. thing, that's going away. Soon after, it's going to be gay marriage. Guarantee it. These things are being stripped away at home, so now they're they're kind of shooting themselves in the foot in that 
they can no longer claim to care about those rights if they're taking them away at home. But yeah, just a little side note. All animals are equal, but some animals are more equal than others. <laughs> Animal farm. They won't blink twice. They will ban abortion at home, but protect abortion abroad. Yeah. I mean, uh, the, the, the American foreign policy always was based on uh, just fictionally spewing uh, propagandistic terms on why we are going into place yeah. A, B, or C, mm -hmm. uh, which is almost never relevant to where the, that same soldier is coming from. Very often... Uh, <laughs> That there were more than enough reports of soldiers having a better life standard in a military base than they do when they go back. Oh home. yeah, uh, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it, it's we're already seeing a relative shift in uh, the approach towards how we are explaining away uh, potential ways we potential reasons for why we need to uh, intervene and not only intervene but also protect our borders from uh, the orientals and what Hakim mentioned is becoming more and more relevant exactly in the field of uh, of keeping foreigners out uh, up until recently it was i mean we talked about this before as well but up until recently it was uh, protecting Western values, protecting our religion, protecting our way of life. But as a bigger chunk of the voting body is becoming more and more socially progressive and as they care less and less about those issues uh, and more and more about progressive issues, the messaging needs to be adapted. So you are not letting in the Oriental who does not understand how to treat a woman and uh, molests women. Uh, in order to protect women's rights at home. And uh, parties like those of Marie Le Pen uh, really successfully use this sort of rhetoric. But it just shows just how relevant the discussion of Orientalism is and how it can mold and change uh, actively. We've completely forgot about the Orientalism of wheat, for example. Oh, it's the Jamaicans, it's the mm. Arabs, and they're hush, and, you know, <laughs> just smoking hush, those picture, those videos in old movies where they're sitting in like a basement with red tinted windows, and there's like ladies doing belly dancing, and like, oh, Indiana Jones is walking in between them and shit. And now weed is, is extremely mainstream, I would argue the most mainstream. <laughs> Gentrified. Uh, Psycho <laughs> substance. You're literally gentrified. Or we should say deorientalized. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Because it's not, because why? Again, everything comes to the discussion of, of class. Because there is uh, an objective. Uh, financial interests in selling you weed. I'm not knocking weed. I'm just saying a lot of people can make money out of weed. So let's turn it into into like a cool hip thing that everybody can do, and not necessarily you know those low pants wearing dudes from the part of town you never go to. Uh, and it, we'll, we'll see that being adapted to uh, almost every other uh, aspect of a society that we might be looking at as the audience. But <laughs> as funny as it it is, but we will be gentrifying one or the other thing that kind of uh, can make some good money, like food, like clothes eventually, etc., etc., without addressing uh, our biases towards uh, those very same peoples from which we are getting inspired with our products from. There's nothing wrong with being inspired or spreading the love for, for cultures and shit. And I'm going to be the last guy that's going to fucking shout cultural imperialism at you. But you cannot at the same time think that, I don't fucking know, uh, Indians are dirty, but then wear their fucking clothes all the time and they're fucking passionate about, um, I don't know, Hinduism and shit. Uh, that's where, <laughs> where the hypocrisy comes in. That's where, uh, quote unquote, culture not that's not even appropriation it's fucking cultural rape sorry for the mm. lack of the other word that mm. comes in and that's the fucking disgusting shit when you uh, mentioned the 
the the the uh, way that um, basically yeah uh, it becomes respectable when it when it's a white industry like for example in, in case of weed um, and there's a very good song uh, by Bamboo B A M B U uh, the, the rapper uh, in Exercising a Demon that album the last song on it he basically it's a song exactly about this uh, about how you know brown black people made the industry but then white people took it over and made it quote unquote legitimate uh, and uh, you can have a bunch of people again white people in industry who are making a killing off of it meaning while the people who made the market in the first place are probably in prison. Um, it's a very interesting song, so, so I just check that out, number one. And number two, when uh, Yugopnik said uh, de-orientalizing, immediately uh, uh, I imagined him with a turtleneck and uh, like thick Tito glasses in a professor's chair and me without clothes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. Oh yeah, yes, someone's going to draw that. Yeah, please do. Um <laughs> Uh, do you see interesting how it. Sorry, I was say, do you see the picture of the, the meme on the on the subreddit where it's uh, those weird mobile ads? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, God. <laughs> where, where, where you guys in the where shower? JT is pregnant. <laughs> yeah, JT is pregnant. He's like my husband. <laughs> it's me. And you go up and you go up and he's like brushing my leg shaving with a toothbrush. I don't know what he's yeah. doing. Oh, he's shaving. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh my God, I have to try really out the look of my face. I, I <laughs> liked it. It it's got me feeling things that I didn't think I would be feeling. <laughs> Exactly. But uh, Join this especially uh, about pregnant yeah. JT. I mean, yes. JT very attractive. Prego mm. JT. Oh, oh my wow. god! <laughs> Don't be a degenerate, please. <laughs> oh, oh my god! But yeah, uh, but not, join the subreddit people. Note. Add the uh, add yes, uh, the, the, the program. I think. Yeah, they did program. Yes, I think. Yes. 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 Sorry, go on. Go. Um, but but on a serious note, I don't know if you if we can still deem it. Uh, we call it Orientalism, we potentially could, but in very, very large countries, like, okay, most of our listeners are from the US, so we can use the US as an example, and you, JT, can tell us your experience as a Texan, you can notice a, a, a cultural shift which has existed probably since the Civil War, in which the North, especially uh, the industrial cores of it, uh, from uh, New York to Boston to New Jersey and to LA or whatever, even though those are the East and the West, but you get my point, uh, the, there is a um, sort of dividing line in how they themselves perceive themselves, the New Yorker as the prime of American culture yeah. and of where every trend is born and, you know, the titans of industry and so on versus the image of the rural redneck, for lack of a better word, which we all know where the term comes from and how there's kind of these... Uh, Two Americas, I mean, there's like 15 Americans, Americas in every single uh, space, but when we're talking about culture, as if there's this genuine way certain, certain parts of the states see themselves versus those uh, backwards, dirty motherfuckers over there who are uh, all this or that, et cetera, et cetera. Even within the United States, like as a Texan, when I moved to Connecticut in like eighth grade, I went to school and, you know, I'd introduce myself to people and some of them were like, do you guys have roads? Do you still use like uh, horse and buggies? And I'm like, it, it's like anywhere else. We've got roads. We drive cars. Mm -hmm. It's it was very strange because there is a a perception uh, in different parts of the country how like different cultures, even within the United States, are, you know, backwards or whatever. It's it's very interesting. And Texas is definitely one of those that has a stereotype. And that's shifting more, I think, as people from places like New York and California move to Texas. It's becoming kind of more known as a, you know, middle-of-the-country business hub like New York or something like that, just, you know, with more cowboy hats and horses. But, yeah, there's definitely a, a prejudice against um, places whose cultures are, are seen as inferior or backwards, like places like Alabama, for example, Mississippi, places like that. It's, um, yeah, it's, it's very real. I can absolutely imagine. Yeah, I mean, from the perspective of a non-American, I've always, uh, I mean, even in your films, in your books, in uh, uh, the way everything is even advertised, that, that there's always been to America. There's been Hollywood, there's yeah. been the, you know, bling, bling. Then there's been Wall Street, uh, the capitalists. And then I imagine a guy with a cowboy hat uh, herding, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, herding... Uh, 
uh, his uh, stock, which out of those three categories, obviously I r relate to the last one the absolute most. But then I had the opportunity to only like go to places in the States where I only get to see the first two categories. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's always been this... Uh, this balance in my in my brain, especially when I talk to people, and they usually hold relatively uh, backwards opinions on uh, the, the south of the U.S., mm. where they genuinely, uh, what I talked about previously, they say, okay, us Americans are not as civilized, that's, sorry, us New Yorkers are not as civilized as uh, the dude from Paris, but we could be much worse. <laughs> Look at those mm -hmm. fucking cousin fuckers down in the <laughs> south. We could be from Wisconsin. <laughs> 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 sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, Chattanooga. Oh, Lord <laughs> Christ. But but you get my. It's it's it, that's why it's important for me. I'm trying to uh, to, to just uh, not take away from uh, what orientalism the part of the world that orientalism has impacted the most without any fucking discussion yeah. at all and and just to to tell people that uh it it a lot a lot of even leftists think that uh, okay because they understand socialism and because they're socially progressive etc cetera, etc cetera, that they still can't hold certain uh, incredibly biased and uh, stereotype infested opinions of even places that are very close to them and places that they've never even been to or met a person from uh, and when you when you understand that you kind of start questioning biases and then you start uh, start changing them so we can help at least change one or two biases because probably most of our people most of the people listening do not you know hold bigoted opinions against the orient but they might uh the orient a fucking <laughs> weird word but you get my point but uh but most probably uh do against uh poor people in their very own communities or their very their very own countries because they associate for example that poverty with uh, a culture of uh, i don't know impoliteness mm -hmm. and uh, lack of culture etc cetera, etc cetera. and we are very and that 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 is a massive problem of the left uh, at least in the west that i've noticed because it really disenfranchises a lot of potential socialists and communists from joining the movement because it all the most of the leadership in a lot of uh, the local parties is very much so uh, led by uh, people with an academic background, people from a relatively wealthy background or middle class background, which is all fine and it's perfect. Thank you for for leading them, them the movement, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But it's undeniable that very often these people hold semi-orientalist views towards uh, those who have not had the same upbringing that they've had. And us as materialists should absolutely avoid that like the plague because it's fucking reactionary as shit. Yeah, the beauty of o Orientalism is uh, it will tell you that me and Yugopnik uh, are exactly the same. <laughs> We're basically the same thing. Meanwhile, somehow Belgians and French people are different. <laughs> you can't tell me that. You, yeah, you can't tell yeah. me that. You can't tell me that Belgium is a real country. Fuck you. <laughs> Sorry, go on. We would need a whole fucking episode. Belgium <laughs> is not a country. Belgium. Uh, so, uh, in order to drive attention away from themselves not being a real country. The people of Belgium have invented Australia so that we all talk about <laughs> giant spiders and massive jumping uh, boxer rabbits, okay? Yeah. <laughs> so uh, that, that is uh, the theory that I am developing. Very it's nice called the, 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 what was the, like the, the weird uh, Nazbos, they were what, the third wave? No, the, the third. Fourth wave, fourth wave. The, the fourth wave? Okay, I'm at creating first, the fifth wave. At first wave. they're like, oh, we're third position. That was the bullshit. And now they're calling they yeah, call, yeah, the third yeah. positionist. Yes, yes. Yeah. I am a fifth positionist. <laughs> my whole ideology is Australia does not exist. That's my whole ideology. Like, uh, vote for me because Australia doesn't exist. He makes a compelling point. I don't know what to say. Mm, <laughs> that's right. But yeah. Um, 
Well, we're approaching an hour, and uh, have we have we given a, d- a definition of cultural imperialism yet? <laughs> I don't think so. I think okay. we're talking too much shit. <laughs> okay, let's let's. <laughs> let's I, I, that's t- why I put it a second, but then we started and we started, and Orientalism <laughs> well, is very j- j- interesting. Just before, but yes, just before yes. you go into the intro on that, I was just gonna say, uh, you go up making the the. Um, the, the Australia speech he was on uh, it reminded me of the American saying which is being on the soapbox which yeah. by the way what what the fuck does that mean so there are boxes <laughs> of soap and then you why why were soap boxes or boxes that previously held soap that no longer hold soap why are the I why are they never the, heard uh, that oh, yeah. article of choice for for when you want to speak publicly yeah it's <laughs> just a, it's just a good sturdy box that you could turn over and put down on a street I mean, corner I'm sure and stand the boxes on it. that what about the boxes that, like potatoes come in and shit like well, our <laughs> potatoes come in bags. Oh, really? Do yeah. They? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, you, you guys should... are savages. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> Ours come in cardboard boxes. Yeah. What the fuck do your potatoes come in? Yeah, it's like a, uh, c- c- most of the time it's a plastic bag, like a perforated plastic bag or one of those mesh yeah. bags. Uh, no, we have... We the have, mesh uh, bags with the holes in yeah. them, right? Uh-huh. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, okay, yeah. okay. No, no, no. Okay, okay. No, I'm not... T- I'm talking about like when you're de- getting a, the delivery into your local grocery. Not when oh. you take home. You don't take a fucking... <laughs> like a wooden <laughs> fucking... <laughs> No, that's not what I meant. Jesus Christ. Okay, uh, yes. That's those what come I meant. In boxes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, um, I don't know why it was a soapbox that, uh, that got picked. Maybe it was just uh, soap vendors who were super into speaking on street corners. I don't know. Let's look into it. Somebody uh, look it up for us. I'm just going to look into and look look at the uh, picture of a soapbox. None of them look nearly sturdy enough to stand on. This is a <laughs> fucking crock of shit. <laughs> this, is, this is American imperialism. This is cultural imperialism right here. <laughs> this, this, this bullshit. This shit that doesn't exist. <laughs> okay, sorry, sorry, go on. A good give segue a, to... Uh, I'll yeah. just do this real, real simply. Um, so think of cultural imperialism like going for a culture victory in Civ. You're imposing your culture on other often weaker cultures, with the goal of establishing your nation's culture as the dominant one in the target nation. So, for example, uh, McDonald's appearing in occupied or otherwise targeted countries, or Coca-Cola, or trendy Western clothing, or Nick Cage movies. I watched one the other night, by the way. Remind me to tell you guys about it. It was garbage. Mm -hmm. Um, (laughs) Or American TV shows is another example. So all of these are byproducts of cultural imperialism. And uh, this was a thing way before the U.S. even existed. A lot of people use it specifically when talking about the U.S., um, but powerful nations have very often attempted to spread their cultures as far as they can throughout history. Um, this was super apparent during the era of European colonialism. They would export fashion, religion, food, even stuff like architecture, and uh, countless other peculiarities to the target nations that they were you know, trying to quote-unquote civilize. No, beautifully put. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> um, sorry. No, I I, I got uh, sidetracked by actually reading about reading up on the stupid soapbox. Soap <laughs> <laughs> All right, tell us what you oh found. God. <laughs> no, sorry. The, the only reason it, the only reason it stood out to me is because when you scroll down the Wikipedia thing, it's like contemporary soapboxing, and there's some video or a picture of of Marianne Williamson. I don't know who this is. Oh, yeah. Speaking with supporters at the Demois Register's political soapbox effect. The Demois Register is apparently a newspaper in Demois, Iowa. Oh, Des Moines. Of <laughs> Des Moines. De- <laughs> That was a good attempt, Demois. though. Demois? Oh. oh, fuck me. I'm so stupid. Yeah, that is an... Oh, okay. Well, French is a waste of time, so I'm not supposed to know. Well, that's... Um, I mean, that's, that you are pronouncing it how the French would pronounce it, presumably. But oh, yeah, okay. we, we're, we're I, ignorant here in the States. I, how is it actually pronounced? Des Moines. Des Moines. Okay, my bad. Des Moines has 215,000 people. For an American city, that's very small, no? Uh-huh. Yeah. It's it's like a perfect square. How do people live here? Jesus Christ. <laughs> Counties Polk and Warren. <laughs> live in a place what called Polk. are you talking what about? Hakeem <laughs> is fascinated by the United States. <laughs> there's there's like a Monsanto like uh, reverse orientalism. Here? What the fuck is this? The I the, uh, the the Iowa State Capitol is there. It's like some weird Byzantine building. That's actually very nice architecture. <laughs> okay, sorry. I'm so, I'm so, <laughs> this is Chattanooga again. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. Go on, go on, go on. That's pretty, um, that's the, pretty much all I had. Yeah, sorry. The roof of the thing is very tacky. It has like an American flag on it. Okay, um, back to the back on topic. Yes, cultural imperialism. Uh, no, they should have a Iraqi flag on it. Yeah, yeah exactly. Inshallah, one day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the bait, bait, successful. <laughs> But yeah, it, what what JT said was actually very uh, well. He, what what he always says is very correct. Oh, um, the 
Habibi. Um, culture imperialism, of course, by the way, is in a weird way also correlated with um, uh, the uh, connection a country has with basically external financial markets um, and quote-unquote cultural and linguistic connection, right? There's a reason, for example, that um, let's say uh, Australia, for example, this country that doesn't exist, has more uh, connection with, with uh, or is more affected by culture imperial imperialism than, let's say, um, Kazakhstan. Despite the fact that, for example, Kazakhstan also has certain, um, at least certain parts of, the, of, of the, the ruling body that have been turning towards the West, and particularly the United States, um, the cultural history as well as other factors haven't allowed the penetration of, of this, this idea of... Um, um, uh, all culture is basically American culture um, to seep in. Uh, and that's fundamentally the point, of course. And there are different parts of the world where it's, there's like some level of cultural imperialism, but by far the absolute heavyweight champion of this is the United States, right? You go to Spain, you go to Nigeria, you go to Brazil, you go to Japan, you're going to see American media everywhere. Yeah. But if you go to, again, uh, Spain or uh, Brazil or Japan or wherever else, you're not going to see uh, Iraqi media or Indian media or uh, Bulgarian media or uh, even other non-English, uh, non-American English uh, speaking uh, countries like... Like, for example, New Zealand or Canadian, uh, even British to an extent, isn't that uh, prevalent, despite the fact that it used to have such a high standing as a ooh, form of colonial power, all that bullshit. My contribution uh, to the conversation would be to explain in an extremely simplistic way how, through American cultural imperialism, how cultural imperialism in general tends to seep into a specific place. So you have the world market, you have capitalism, you have countries trading amongst each other, you have deals and agreements between states that any business which wants to operate on their local territory is allowed to come, open their office, pay local taxes, and expand and operate in the same manner in which a local business operates. When you have a incredibly wealthy country like the United States, which is not only financially, but militarily and now culturally dominant over every single inch of the planet, almost every single inch, uh, then, and you have these open free market borders, then what happens? Well, the businesses with the most capital, the biggest advertising budget, and uh, the uh, most developed uh, kind of uh, octopod of logistics spread to the largest parts of the world. They find themselves as the highest quality products. They find themselves as uh, items which show success, which show progress. They co co uh, co-sign themselves not only as American in being from the United States, but as places which come to your country carrying uh, the stereotypical American values uh, that we all know. So cultural imperialism in capitalism specifically, where the biggest driving factor is consumption, because consumption leads to profitability, will eventually be consumerism. But this is not something we should be pointing at the U.S. and saying, okay, this is like specifically an American problem. If tomorrow the invented country of Australia becomes the mm -hmm. most wealthy and most militarily uh, and geopolitically powerful country on planet Earth, we would be seeing a shift in... Uh, following and uh, consuming more and more of uh, Australian culture. Because again, due to the free market, it would slowly seep in absolutely everywhere. But as we know, not all of us are walking around with cowboy hats, nor are we reading uh, Jane Austen novels. So um, the, the, the cultural imperialism which we are experiencing 
in the, a constantly globalized world where the U.S. is a hegemon isn't necessarily actual real American culture mm. being imported to our shores, but it's the for-profit kind of invented by the market definitions of what it is to be American, which at the end of the day is to wear jeans, to eat at McDonald's, and to drink Coca-Cola. And, and to those watch fucking Friends. Jesus Christ. And I oh my God. <laughs> I fucking hate I friends. I fucking despise friends. <laughs> yes. It's the worst. Really? Oh my God. A man shit. of taste. Yeah, yeah. It's so yeah, fucking. Yeah. I could never have watched like th five episodes. Or, oh Lord. Oh, what's that fucking show where that guy screams Bazinga? Uh, oh, Lord. oh my God. No. Oh God. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. Oh God. Jesus Christ. Really, it's, yeah, this is the garbage that's fucking exported. God forbid. I wish people were reading Jane Austen novels or something. You know, at least then, at least people are reading. Yeah. <laughs> two, two and a half men is kind of okayish. It's kind of okayish. You know, I can survive it. Uh, I I, I have never think? watched an American sitcom uh, that I like. I, I've never you know sat and be like, How? and uh, I've never thought to myself like, I, yeah, I can sit here. I can I can watch this. It's it's like it's an elective lobotomy watching this shit. I swear to God. I swear to God. Well, I think that's, Humilitism. that's the idea, though. It's to it's to it's to present you with something that you don't even have to know when you're supposed to laugh yourself. You don't. That's fed to you as well. Anything with a laugh track. It's like, okay, laugh now. This is the I funny part. I promise you, if if the Soviet Union made shows. Or made like TV where there was a laugh track. They'd be like, "Oh, look how authoritarian! Look, look how horrible, yeah. horrific, and and, yeah. and totalitarian this is." They they tell them when to laugh, and then yeah. it's like, "Stop!" <laughs> no, there would be like yeah. there would be like hearings in which they are uh, like getting together actual like serious lawyers and academics, and they would be like, "But how are they forcing them to laugh? They must be, must be pointing AK 47s at them." Yeah. Like there's the the guy doing the TV talk show, and there's like uh, 20, 20 Soviets with their Yushankas. Uh, pointing like RPGs mm. at the crowd because, <laughs> uh, you know, in Soviet country, that is the only way to force men to laugh. But in America, you turn on big red sign, it's a laugh, and they do the laugh now. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's, Christ, uh, yeah. it's fucking amazing. No, the, the sitcoms in general. Though Modern Family was not Modern Family bad. is decent. Modern Family yeah, is but decent. Is that right. a sitcom, though? It's not uh, really. Also, by the way, it's, it's again, we mentioned this before, but again, this the selling of the American lifestyle, which yeah. again, uh, it's a form of power projection on the United States. They, they make an act. They're not stupid. They make an active effort. And uh, the uh, uh, powers that be have a, a vested interest in uh, basically presenting the United States a very specific way uh, through their TV, through their media, through their music, and whatever else um, by, for example projecting this idea that oh you know an average american family literally it's called modern family of which um all of them live in huge houses yeah. multi-story homes right um it's aside from the 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 gay couple i think all the other ones live in basically multi-story homes right um there's one person working i believe uh, for example in the, the 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 main family right the husband the wife and the three kids i think it's only the husband who's working as a realtor and he's providing somehow in this modern American economy, providing uh, un university bills and, and like uh, paying for everything else just on his own, on, on one realtor salary. I don't know if that's that doesn't sound like it would be a luxurious lifestyle, but depends uh, on the like, market. They all have hot wives. They all have hot wives. <laughs> that is impossible. <laughs> <laughs> that is an American propaganda. Every okay, whatever. Well, uh, even all of our all commercials are are just like that, and it's it's become a trope now. Because anytime a commercial comes on TV and uh, they're trying to sell you, I don't know, soap or something or whatever it is, there's like a young, maybe twenty five year old woman, and she lives in this gorgeous house with like marble yeah. everything, and it's all clean and white and immaculately decorated. And it's like that's not. Just like Possible. the nation should be. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what you're showing me is a lie. It's, it's yeah. Yeah. I mentioned Meanwhile, this Eastern, says, uh, normal yeah. standard Eastern European that goes to Austria and works for like three, four months and literally lives in a four-story household made out of marble, watching uh, a TV ad with that same woman and going like in living in that luxury house and going, oh my God, why are they showing poor people in the television? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, honestly. I was going to say, yeah, this is the, this is the Home Alone phenomenon. Where you, you, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, seriously, that, that that did a number. Like I was a kid, I was looking. I was like, "Is this how? I don't believe this is how Americans live. Is it? Is this how Americans live? <laughs> <laughs> you know, they're all multimillionaires living in fucking <laughs> yeah, right? Jesus Christ." Um, and it's and yeah. it's not like there there's a uh, group of people in a room that are like, oh my god, we need to 
uh, create uh, an, an image of America all over the world, which is uh, like this and this. Yes, it existed big time during the Cold War, but now there's no need to even allocate a budget to it. Private companies do it for you for through yeah. advertising. They, they, if they want to sell you uh, Burger King in fucking Hungary, they first need to sell you uh, America mm. equals quality, equals freedom, equals good burgers, equals <laughs> come come eat here. So it, it, everything's been outsourced. No, no wonder the CIA doesn't know what it's doing anymore. There's a Hard Rock Cafe at Checkpoint Charlie in Berlin. <laughs> so you need to yes. know about, about cups from Berlin. There's a fucking, and there's, I think there's a KFC as well. <laughs> it's like, oh, here's this piece of uh, Cold War history. <laughs> and then right in, the, right, it's like, and over there is some fucking overpriced garbage. Yeah. Do you want some fucking... The biggest definition of cultural imperialism I can give you for my life is I still tell it to people. It's fucking insane. We went to an excursion with my primary school to Italy. We oh, went fun. to fucking Bologna, an incredibly beautiful place. Mm. And out of a class of 30 people... Only me and two others went to sit in an Italian restaurant. 27 of them went to the fucking McDonald's. Oh, my Lord. In oh Bologna. Fuck. What the... F that, oh if God. that is not the definition of cultural yeah. imperialism, I don't know what it is. Wow. Jesus Christ. That's yeah. insane. Yeah. And d you mentioned CIA a minute ago, and that made me think. I was scrolling through, because Kelsey's in Zimbabwe, and I'm bored to death. Um, so I was scrolling through things to watch, and there are like a dozen things where the plot is like, this guy's a CIA agent, or this flight attendant's a CIA mm. agent, or this guy was an ex-CIA yeah. agent, and they're bringing him back in. It's yeah. like, wow, we really need to sell these as like the good guys who are going yeah, around heroes, the world doing yeah. good. So successful. That's incredible. So successful. Mm. To yeah. me, it's still to me, it's still impossible to um, admit it. To me, a CIA agent is basically a a um, a Gestapo officer, mm. yeah. almost okay. one to one. Maybe not as racist. Okay, whatever. Uh, yeah. One to uh -huh. one, but I still can't imagine because I think CIA agent fucking think Denzel Washington. Yeah. I fucking think uh, very good looking blonde dude in a fucking suit saving a lady <laughs> from a potential car explosion in a country where he's not supposed to be in. But when I was young watching that movie, I did not realize that. But yeah, you get the point. It's, it's yeah. impossible. Like to me, when I think of CIA agent, I don't feel anything like necessarily negative. <laughs> and then... <laughs> My Is brain starts working in the second and third second and fourth and fifth and then. But I'm so brainwashed to think FBI as well. Oh, my God. Solving fucking serial yeah. uh, killer crimes, fucking helping out the community. Man, these people are sacrificing so much because I fucking watched so many fucking films and, and shows mm. that have absolutely ingrained this in me. And I keep watching them and they keep like hiring these very good actors and they keep writing them as these like... Uh, cut dry good guys mm. so yeah good good job on mentioning that because it's not just uh, uh the, the replacing of local cultures with uh with those from whatever the dominant economic power is but it's also the whitewashing mm. of uh, just what that culture which is domineering over others is in the first place which is a very very important distinction bro i didn't think of that mm. but also <laughs> What you you're telling me if if you're watching a show he's like former mili <laughs> militia <laughs> agent he's a former militia <laughs> he's yeah, like, I mean, yeah. No, he's like, but nobody would take it back. seriously like <laughs> no tell me if somebody somebody w made a movie with like um, and created like three characters who are former Saddam Hussein's yeah. guard and tried yeah. to set uh, like personal guard whatever they were called probably uh, the elite idea, units right? yeah and they're and they're uh, like presented as these like cut and dry just like yeah. good guys no matter how big of a like Saddam stan one would be or like Iraqi ultra nationalist or for me if they showed like some uh, some guy from the Sik Milosevic's secret <laughs> police some or Ante Pavelic's secret police or Tujman's secret police and be like a good guy I would fucking no no matter how like nationalistic I might be, I would like cringe. I would cringe. I was like, oh, fuck, mm. man, what does this shit propaganda that they're actually yeah. playing on TV? But for some reason, when it's an MI6 agent, 
Mm. You don't get the same reaction. You don't. There's a whole series, 007, and, and I go watch it, and it's yeah. <laughs> usually very good. Like, what the fuck is wrong with us? I don't know. <laughs> Like, I'm an alcoholic who forces myself on women. And then people are like, oh, clap. Oh, <laughs> clap. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. But yeah, so th- that's that's exactly right. Uh, and w- w- what kind of makes it even um, worse is that a lot of people don't realize that there is this. Okay, people intrinsically know that, yeah, uh, there's cultural imperialism. There is all this American media, um, even to the way that people speak. For example, um, simple things like uh, um, texting, text speech patterns. Uh, mm-hmm. in other languages are affected by American slang, stuff like that, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you're telling me, it's like, oh, I'm sure there's some very interesting slang they use in Uganda, but uh, some guy sitting in Florida is not going to be using that slang. Yeah. yeah. But that guy in Uganda most likely will know about, you know, uh, like, oh, Chick-fil-A be bussin'. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what. <laughs> Real <laughs> <He'll> probably... tiny, <laughs> He'll Real understand tiny terms, like my, gra- my dad who doesn't speak a word of English, he writes pull a to say please, PLS, <laughs> or lol, he yeah. writes lol, yeah. lol, yeah. lol yeah. lmao, and yeah. like dad, where did you hear that? And he's like, I don't fucking know, my girlfriend sent me that shit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I love it. But yeah, exactly right. Um, and then and, and people um, are, yeah, exactly right. People realize this, but then they're like, yeah, so what? It's it's uh, harmless. And in a way, it can be, but also in a way, you're kind of doing the, the, the State Department's work for them. Uh, not mm-hmm. to be like, ooh, paranoid fucking uh, tinfoil hat stuff. But uh, at the end of the day, also, um, putting aside like, you know, local cultural influences being basically uh, cornered out from their, you know, their, from home ground, basically, uh, what you also end up doing is you end up creating a cultural familiar, familiarity with the uh, perspectives of the United States, particularly also when it comes to, for example, um, the things that the United States tries to project, their foreign policy, their power, uh, both economic, political, and military, etc. This creates another point of um, uh, relevance or, or understanding, and that kind of ties back into the point of the CIA agent. A, For, for example, a Croatian guy can sit and watch a movie where it's like oh CIA agent or former CIA agent and see him as a good guy and not think twice but if it was the same movie and it said uh, KGB agent or former KGB agent he would oh, probably gosh. have a thing or two to say about oh well, why is he being portrayed as a good guy you know all that kind of shit why you know grabbing again. balls not realistic <laughs> yeah exactly yeah he should be licking them not grabbing them that's what the KGB <laughs> but yeah exactly oh, yeah right. yeah the NKVD grabbed them and uh, oh, yeah. KGB after the reforms from any KVD to KGB, it's, it's no leaking. Yeah. Yes, apologies, apologies. Right. And then it was revision. And so they went to just kind of uh, light fondling. Um, it's a shame. It's a shame. Uh, see, that's why we're against <laughs> crucified, re- crucified revisionism on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> At one point, they even stopped harassing people. Fucking yeah. revisionist. My God, right? <laughs> Okay, so I forgot to uh, tell you guys about the Nick Cage movie that I said I wasn't going to forget to tell you about. All right, so <laughs> I love Nick Cage movies. Like, for as long as Same. I can remember, I've watched Nick Cage movies and enjoyed the hell out of them. Um, Such an inspiration. I know. He's great. Yeah. Do you and, have a favorite? Um, man, I really... I, uh, people are going to cancel me for this, but I really like Lord of War. <laughs> Same. That's my favorite one from his... No, that's that's my favorite movie. series pick. Hell yeah. Okay, good. Um... But that one's a lot of fun. Stereotypical depiction of Eastern Europeans, but uh, yeah. I approve. I approve. I give my sign. I yeah. get the uh, S pass. <laughs> the intro yeah. to that movie is fantastic. Like the life of the bullet yeah, yeah, thing. Yeah. That was really, yeah, really cool. Man. Really clever. Dude, yeah. that was cool. Um, I would make a whole movie with the life of a bullet. Yeah. That'd be cool. That was my idea. Now everybody's going to steal it. That would be so <laughs> cool. It can go like uh, first in the, not a bullet, or a gun, because the bullet is going to only be fired like once. Like the red violin, but, but, but with a, an AK. Yeah, with the, with an AK. So, so it goes to some guy in Alabama to shoot in his field, then he sells it, then it gets stolen from a shop, then it's used uh, in uh, like gangster shootouts, then from there mm-hmm. it's lost, and then uh, it's uh, found by police and it's put in those large stockpiles, which mm-hmm. are mass sold to uh, some warring country, mm-hmm. and then we get see the experiences there. Uh, Some Serbian guy picks it blah, up. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it could it could like look at I don't know ten different lifestyles, yeah. ten different conflict zones through one film and tell like different short stories. And I just told it in front of around <laughs> I don't know sixty seventy thousand <laughs> listeners. Support so this idea is out of the support of the Patreon. We'll make it happen. 
<laughs> we'll make it happen. We have a cinematographer on board. It's fine. That's true. <laughs> I was just gonna say, by the way, uh, not not to do. I'll get, let you get to your point. Like, but the the uh, if a liberal made a video of uh, the life of a bullet uh, or a movie of the life of a bullet, it will probably be like that um, movie Blood Diamond. And oh, yeah. basically, it shows like how horrible blood diamonds are, and then in the end, they're like, "Please buy diamonds responsibly." Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Classic, it's like classic. It would be the same. It was like, yeah, it's good. It will show. It will show a bullet enter. It like, uh, it will be uh, like some ethnic cleansing, and it will be a kid being shot on the back of the head, and then in the end, it goes to black, and it's like, "Please buy your ammunition responsibly." <laughs> <laughs> it's like, Walmart <laughs> stocks. <laughs> it was a cruelty-free <laughs> ammunition. <laughs> <laughs> sorry sorry go on jc yes nick cage movies apologies bro. yeah 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 you're good um so the one i watched last night was uh prisoners of the ghost land have you guys seen this one or heard of it <laughs> no, I, I don't know this <laughs> okay one. Oh, that is might, such a I mouthful it. of a, yeah. is it is it a non-english speaking movie because that sounds like a translation uh, not a... it's made by the director was is a japanese guy he's a uh, like in the japanese art house uh ah, scene. okay i get it yeah horrible titles japanese <laughs> it's like uh, <laughs> fucking water and sugar yes yeah so it's an it's a really interesting mix like the trailer makes it look like a wild cool ride um and it's like a neo noir samurai western kind of thing post-apocalyptic and like nick cage is a as a criminal in samurai town which is this weird that's the name of the town um hmm. and he robs a bank with a dude and then basically long story short he gets caught uh this local governor slash warlord's granddaughter has escaped and gone missing and been captured by uh these other people and so he tasked nick cage with with going and picking her up and get, and bringing her back but that's not enough so he he puts this he gets makes this suit for him it's like this leather suit and it's got explosives at the neck one on each arm and two on the balls and he says like mm-hmm. if you if you feel the urge to hit a woman the your one of your arm things will explode if you feel the urge to uh harass a woman or whatever one of your balls will explode and it's a bizarre, what? bizarre movie, and like an interesting. But was he a harasser before that? So no, like, like they, you know, they... like all these movies, there's a you know flashbacks and stuff where he's actually a decent guy, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but at one point, he one of his ball things does explode, and he like holds up a bloody testicle to the camera, and it's like oh, Jesus Christ! Oh no, come <laughs> on! And it's all, <laughs> it's, it's f- fascinating to watch. Like it was, I almost turned it off because it was a cool idea, but so poorly executed. The writing was garbage. Sound design was not very good. The set design was great. It was very pretty. Um, but man, like at one point, I'll I'll drop the sound bite in in the the editing. But he's like addressing a <laughs> bunch of people and yelling about his testicles, and it's man. Ghostlanders, tomorrow. Getting out of here. Impossible. Impossible. It's impossible. <laughs> impossible. Ha! If you had told me three days ago I'd be standing here with one arm and one testicle, trying to reason with you, bitches, I would have said impossible too. Yeah, prisoners <laughs> of the uh-huh. Ghostland. Uh, I don't recommend it, but if you're looking for something to mm-hmm. watch and be very confused about. Give it a try. Uh, it was rated more highly than I would have guessed. It has like a six point two on on IMDb, mm. I think. Um, but yeah, well, it's at the four point two now. Oh, is so. it? Okay, good. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's, that's, that's that's closer to where it should be. <laughs> but uh, I, I was gonna say. Yeah. I was gonna say for uh, like an actual really good Nicolas Cage movie, Mandy is fucking fantastic. I, yeah, it's I've a, heard. It's a fantastic movie. Very very interesting. Beautifully cinematically, uh, absolutely stunning as well. Uh, I'm just going to say that this will become the, the Nicolas Cage movie recommending hour. There's one more <laughs> yeah. movie I recommend that's actually also very good but weird. It's called Wild at Heart. It's from 1990. Uh, and it is it's uh, it has William Defoe in it as well. It's a very, oh, very man. weird movie. Um, William but Defoe yeah, is I, I scary. Recommend it. Yeah. <laughs> but his drip is insane. But, if you've seen him walking around like New York and stuff, people will stop him and just like ask him what really, he's wearing. Hold on. William uh, leaving Las Defoe. Vegas with Nick Cage is literally one of the top 10 best movies I've ever watched ever. It's like an absolute masterpiece. It's depressing as fuck, but it's incredible. There was an AMA with Nick Cage recently on Reddit and he was asked like if you could only keep a couple of your movies what would they be? And he said Leaving Las Vegas obviously and then Pig was another one. So apparently Pig is very good. <laughs> Pig is great. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah I recommended it, it in another episode. <laughs> yeah, we tend to talk about Nick yeah. Cage a lot. <laughs> but Pig, Pig is good. Pig is very weird. Pig is not for everyone. But uh, it's really good. It's just, it's a movie that questions, uh, mm. you start watching it and there's this badass guy. So we are so conditioned to thinking that when there's a badass guy that's going for revenge, it's going to start stabbing and shooting and blowing up people, right? Mm. But this guy, there's a twist, you'll see. This guy is an expert, but in something else. And then he starts exacting his revenge with the other skill which he has. Not all of us are Rambos. So basically, it's a movie about Rambo, but Rambo can't shoot people. Huh. Uh, but he can do something else, which I can't don't want to spoil because that's half of the movie. So yeah, you watch it, watch it. It's 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 uh, quirky. It's it's good. I guess it's I'm watching very Pig well tonight. Shot. Do it. Eat some pig while you watch Pig. Oh. No, don't, because the the because the piggy is very cute and. I really want to stop eating pork because fucking pigs are so fucking cute. I like, feel bad for them. And cows are so fucking, oh my God. Chickens. Ah, fuck them. Fuck them chickens, bro. Yeah. Fucking, go, 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 go. Fucking, yeah. Annoying like, and loud. Um, Don't care about chickens. Absolutely. And this is coming from an ex-vegetarian. Okay, let's let's wrap up. <laughs> <laughs> we we have uh, uh, thoroughly left the realm of yeah. what this episode is intended to be. Uh, I hope you can glean some. I tried to bring it back, bro. I tried. I tried I hope you my glean best. Something useful out of the shit show <laughs> that is the, the, that is this this episode. Um, but hey, it's, it, it, let's hope it made, it made some people laugh. Um, I hope you wasted some company time. Uh, I hope you, I made your your spreadsheets a bit easier. Uh, or if you're doing surgery and listening to this, I don't know why. <laughs> you know, actually, in 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 uni, sometimes we'd we'd go to the to, to the surgery hall, and then I'd see like old ass surgeons. Um, what's it called? Uh, arguing over who whose YouTube playlist gets to play <laughs> on the fucking oh, computer surgery. in the corner. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's, huh. Oh, it's hilarious. And some of them they listen to like weird. I remember it's like an old dignified surgeon. This dude's pl- probably like sixteen and above, and he was listening to. Uh, uh, harder, better, faster, stronger by Daft Punk <laughs> while, <laughs> while doing a collectomy. <laughs> Amazing. Oh, fuck. Class. Yeah. But anyways, uh, by, the t- by, by the time you people will be listening to this, we will have hit, I think, officially a million listeners. Um, wow. That is, wow. Um, yes, wow. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much for all the support. Thank you to all the people who listen to us. I still don't understand why people listen to us, but uh, I'm, not, I'm not complaining either way. Of course, a special thanks to to the people who support us on Patreon. Of course, without them, this would not be possible at all. Um, so a big, big thanks to to all you people. Um, go join the Patreon, join the, the subreddit, the D program. There's been some funny memes, and every time we sh- shout it out, like 200 people join. Um, so uh, I'm hoping to get it to a decent size, so then I can have a, uh, a <laughs> we can have like a meme memes, segment yeah. or something, a, con- <laughs> a, con- a constant flow that we can you know uh, laugh at, maybe on like a special segment or something. We'll see, we'll see. Maybe for the live episodes. We'll yeah, see. but yeah. With all that being said, though, this has been the program. I'm Hakim. I'm JT. And I'm Yugopnik, Nick Cage, Objectively Good. Ta-